Hey, good morning. Meteorologist Scott Pelier here with your Tropics Outlook and discussion for August 25th, 2021. Lots to talk about as we approach the climatological peak of the Atlantic hurricane season with not one, not two, but three tropical disturbances that we're keeping an eye on across the Atlantic basin. Of course, the primary focus and what we're going to spend most of this video breaking down is the evolution of an invest dubbed Invest 99L that is located over parts of the West Central Caribbean this morning. And this is the feature kind of highlighted here in red that we're going to spend most of our time kind of breaking down the evolution and possible impacts to land that this disturbance could have as it moves towards the Yucatan Peninsula and the West Central Gulf of Mexico as we head towards this weekend. Before we get there, we do have two other disturbances that are worth mentioning, mainly because they may actually play a role in the name that this disturbance in the Western Caribbean eventually does get. And that's because this disturbance in the far open Atlantic towards the east of Bermuda, labeled here, this system has the chance as well, an 80% chance of becoming a tropical depression or tropical storm in the next three to five days as well. So kind of a battle going on between these two systems to see which one gets the name Ida, I-D-A, already up to the I name storm. And yeah, kind of a battle as to whether or not the disturbance in the Caribbean Invest 99L becomes Ida or whether the system in the open Atlantic eventually does become Ida first. Regardless, the next name after Ida would be Julian. So Julian is the name after Ida. So we'll see which one ends up becoming Ida in the longer term. But at this point, the only disturbance that is worth watching closer to home along the west central Gulf Coast is this disturbance that could spell trouble for someone down the road as we go into the latter part of this weekend and especially into early next week. So again, really briefly, area of disturbed weather, broad trough of low pressure over the open Atlantic, 80% tropical development now chances from the National Hurricane Center with that. And in the open Atlantic, towards the west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, we also have another area of disturbed weather, a pretty vigorous area of low pressure. In fact, uh, over the open Atlantic, this has a low 30% chance of tropical development as it kind of moves generally towards the west, uh, northwest over the next couple of days. And after that, signs pointing, unfortunately, that as we approach that climatological peak of the hurricane season, we're going to continue to see this activity well after this trio of tropical disturbances. Forecast models indicate additional waves rolling off the coast of Africa. So tis the season, if you haven't already, make sure that you've reviewed your hurricane preparation plan just in case you need to put it into action as we head throughout this Atlantic hurricane season. And of course, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment your questions in the video below. And I'll get back to you uh, once this video is up, posted, and rolling. You can also reach out to me on all social media platforms, meteorologist Scott Peeliang on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok as well. All right, let's break down the current forecast with Invest 99L, the feature that is located in the Caribbean. Uh, we're going to kind of take a little bit more of an extended breakdown with this system, as again, it's the one that is worth watching much more closely for us along the west central Gulf Coast. Latest update from the National Hurricane Center. This is their 8 a.m. update. Now an 80% chance of tropical development with this feature in the Caribbean over the next three to five days. Now there has been some changes with the forecast regarding this system as we go through time, mainly with the projections in terms of path. If you've been keeping up with the tropics the past couple of days, uh, we just had Grace that made landfall over parts of South Mexico. Uh, after making an initial landfall as a hurricane near the Yucatan Peninsula, Grace kind of took a track uh, somewhat like this, went due towards the west, towards parts of Mexico, and made landfall as a powerful Category 3 hurricane with max winds close to 125 over South Mexico. That was Grace, now close to about a week ago. Now we've got our next potential tropical system, and this one, initially, forecast models were suggesting maybe we see a similar path, right? High pressure off the eastern seaboard. If it's strong enough, that would pull, 
this or pull this uh, and kind of shunt it towards the west southwest that was the initial kind of projections by some of our forecast model guidance but over the past couple of days we've seen some changes and the reason for that is forecast models are starting to trend towards a little bit of a weaker high over the southeastern United States, hence opening the door for this system to gain some latitude, get a little bit more poleward as it moves towards the Gulf of Mexico and potentially pay a visit to any areas that I'll highlight here in red, basically anywhere from Mexico all the way to southeast Louisiana and Mississippi and even towards the central Gulf Coast I would have a close eye on this. Forecast model data uh, has really expanded or fanned out with a potential slew uh, of opportunities of areas that should be keeping a close watch on this. Obviously, we're still about five to six days out from this uh, paying a visit to anyone along the northern Gulf Coast. So it goes without saying that we're going to continue to see this pinwheel, if you will, uh, of the forecast model data where we're going to get various outcomes or various solutions um, that are going to be possible. They're really going to become more fine-tuned, I think, with some clarity late week and into the weekend for who's most at risk along the Northwest Gulf Coast. So let's try to break that down a little bit here preliminary this morning. First things first, let's take a look at the visible satellite animation. You can see that overnight uh, towards the north of Cartagena, and into parts of Colombia, you can see that we've got a big blow up of storms south of Haiti and Hispaniola. I'll outline that here for you in pink. You can see this blow up of convection uh, associated with kind of an elongated wave axis like so. Uh, this wave axis is becoming a little bit more pronounced on the northern side of that wave axis. Somewhere within here, uh, we're starting to get some spin, some cyclonic spin there. And I think that's some preliminary evidence that this is going to be a disturbance to watch uh, as it encounters more favorable conditions once it gets into parts of the Western Caribbean and Southern Gulf of Mexico. But it's going to take some time for this to kind of coagulate and coalesce and organize because of a couple of things. First things first, it's battling some pretty strong wind shear and you can kind of see that. I'll clear this off for you and outline some things in orange so you can get a better look. Uh, if you look at these clouds, notice how they're racing, these upper level cirrus clouds, notice how they're racing towards uh, the north and east. That's some wind shear that is being imposed upon our tropical wave here, 99L, by what we call an upper level low or an upper level trough in the atmosphere. And that's located right about here. It's producing some disorganized showers and storms over parts of the Bahamas, and this is helping to induce some pretty strong wind shear uh, over our disturbance presently. However, with time, as we head towards late week and into the weekend, this upper level low is going to start to pull away uh, towards the west, and it's actually going to start to uh, help ventilate or create some breathing room for the system. Uh, it's going to move a little bit quicker towards the west. And as we start to get some thunderstorms kind of blossoming with this uh, disturbance, it's likely going to start to create an environment for itself that's a little bit more suitable uh, for organization. What I mean by that, I'll kind of show it to you here on the GFS forecast model, is that as we go through time, and let me clear this off for you, as we go through time, the upper level wind pattern, I'll show it to you here, presently, this is a present look at the upper level wind pattern and you're probably saying, Scott, what are we looking at here? Well, here's the general idea. This upper level low that you're seeing over the Bahamas, right about here, right? You can see the wind pattern and our disturbance right about here. Watch what happens as I animate through this a couple of frames. As we pull this forward, by the time we get to Friday morning, our upper level low Watch it right about here. It starts to kind of lose its strength. It backs away towards the west, uh, northwest, and we start to see our disturbance, which I'll highlight here for you in red. Our disturbance in the Caribbean starts to help uh, ventilating itself as we start to see convection, showers and thunderstorms, those diabatic heat processes. Big word, fancy word, but basically... As thunderstorms start to build, 
uh, they're going to help ventilate um, the system. They're going to act a little bit as a buffer against that light west-northwesterly uh, wind shear that was initially being imposed on the disturbance. So here's our weak upper level low Friday morning, but notice we're starting to get a pretty good outflow channel uh, where we've got this nice upper level high that is building over top, and that suggests a pretty ripe environment for our system as it moves its way into the south central Gulf of Mexico by Saturday and into Sunday for some strengthening. Notice those pressure uh, values starting to drop according to this particular GFS forecast model. And as we go towards Sunday, here's the system. South of Louisiana as a likely hurricane with a pretty decent upper level environment for strengthening. So that's kind of a preliminary look at some of the ingredients for this system moving forward. Now, of course, the big question I think for a lot of us is the track, right? Where do we think this is going to go? We can look at the forecast model data and get an idea that, okay, the environment looks fairly suitable for strengthening once this gets into the Gulf of Mexico. But what's going to be steering? Let's kind of break that down for a second and talk a little bit more uh, about the steering for this system. And we'll try to take this a little bit uh, high level and keep it a little bit more engaging so you can get an idea. So I'm going to put this uh, in geopotential heights. So this is a way to analyze pressure in the atmosphere. The shadings of red that you see here, that indicates upper level high pressure. The areas that you see in blue indicate low pressure. So let's draw this. Here's our upper level ridge. And we'll make this a little bit larger so you can get a better idea uh, at the setup. And again, you can see we've got an upper level ridge over parts of the uh, eastern United States as we go towards this upcoming weekend. So here's our upper level ridge towards the east. And then to the south, what we've got is our disturbance, where you can see right about here. It's kind of difficult to pinpoint, and for whatever reason, my pen is not getting a little bit larger <laughs> to try to give you an idea, a better idea of this for whatever reason. Sometimes these softwares, you never know what's going to happen. Here we go. Got it. There it is. So here's our disturbance uh, south of Hispaniola this morning. We've got a big upper level ridge off the eastern seaboard, and then we've got our upper level low that is located right over parts of the Bahamas. So there's the features at play. We've got the upper level low that is currently inducing some wind shear uh, on our disturbance, and currently the system is being steered predominantly by the upper level high. So it's still clockwise flow uh, around this upper level high is steering our disturbance towards the west-northwest uh, with time. Now, as we go forward in time, watch what starts to happen. I'll click this forward, and you'll notice as we go towards Friday, our upper level low has weakened. As I kind of mentioned uh, a few moments ago, the upper level high doesn't really strengthen very much, right? So it's still located over the eastern seaboard, but unlike with Grace, we don't see this high extending way south into the Gulf. Uh, it's a little bit of a weaker signal of an upper level high. What that means is that, again, the system can't go due to the north because of this ridging of high pressure. That acts as a block, this upper level ridge. Uh, so our system wants to take a path towards the west, northwest, rather than the north because it can't go north into this high pressure ridge. So with time, by the time we get to Friday, we've got an area, uh, more than likely a depression or tropical storm that is developed in the Western Caribbean with a pretty ripe environment as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico for continued organization. Obviously some hurdles to that would be any interaction with Cuba and or the Yucatan Peninsula, which could put a halt uh, on the intensification process as we go towards the weekend. By the time we get to early next week, uh, we start to see that high still there, but not super strong over the Gulf uh, and the central Gulf, at least, as we move towards uh, the early part of next week. So here we are on Saturday. There's the upper level ridge centered over North Carolina and Virginia. And you can kind of see the base of that ridge. See that 591 
geopotential height number there. That kind of extends all the way to about New Orleans towards Lafayette. So you have the ridge there, uh, but it's not super strong. So as our system moves into the Gulf, it kind of bumps up uh, against that ridge and kind of begins to round around the ridge. Key takeaways from this, though, folks, is that uh, we're still several days out. The extent of that ridge will dictate uh, how far north the system is able to go or how far west the system will be forced to go. So there are numerous track opportunities here at play depending on the strength of this upper level high by the time we get to Saturday. So again, all folks basically from Mexico towards the central Gulf Coast, that's kind of your idea at this point uh, to be prepared. And what I mean by that is that this is nothing to be overly concerned with just yet. We have a lot of days to continue to watch the forecast model data um, become more clear. And I think we will get more clarity on this situation as we get towards Friday and into Saturday as we begin to see how strong that high pressure system over the East Coast truly is as we get Hurricane Hunter data uh, in there and get more analyzations of the strength of that high pressure system. And also, we'll see where this system organizes. Remember, if it forms further south, that could lead to a further south track. If it forms a little bit further to the north, closer towards Grand Cayman, that could lead towards more of a northerly track. So again, lots and lots of kind of small caveats to this forecast that will make a big impact down the road on where this system will go. Final look at the European forecast model guidance, the ensemble guidance from last night, and it shows you exactly what I just mentioned. Wide array of solutions. You can see how they're more tightly clustered down here at days two and three by a Thursday and into Friday. But then as we go towards next Monday and Tuesday, a lot more space, right? A much larger uh, slew of potential outcomes. But you get your idea of that general trajectory as we head towards early next week with a possible uh, hurricane in the Western Gulf in the late month of August and into early September. It bears watching and certainly you want to make sure if you're along the Texas and Louisiana coast to have that hurricane preparation plan reviewed just in case you need to spring it into action as we head into early next week. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll have a lot more updates over the next couple of days. Until then, have a great rest of your Wednesday and I'll talk to you all soon.